Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how you can discourage users from entering in bad values in cells in numbers. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon to read more about it, join us, and get exclusive content. So I can't limit the values entered into cells in numbers. You can discourage bad values using a number of different techniques. So here's a simple table and I've entered some values in as examples here. The idea is I want to make sure that the values in column B are numbers between 1 and 9. So I have mostly good values in here but I have one that's too big, I've got one that's too small, I've got one that's blank. Now I can't go and set limits for this to force somebody to enter in values between 1 and 9 but I can use a few techniques to discourage them from entering wrong values. The first technique we're going to look at is conditional highlighting. So I'm going to select all the cells in here. I can select the entire column by clicking on the column head but that includes the header row there. So I'm instead going to just select the cells. Make sure I select all of them. And then I'm going to go to Format, Cell, and then Conditional Highlighting. Now I'm going to add a rule. So the first row I want to add is pretty simple. I'm going to choose numbers here on the left. I'm going to use not between. And then I'm going to say it needs to be between 1 and 9. And if not it's going to do something like do a red fill here. And you can see it even updates as I'm working here. So I can see the three bad values. I can hit Done. Now when I go and change a value, like I'll change this to 5, you can see it corrects itself. If I change a value here to outside the range it makes that one red. So I can see there's an error. So it's really obvious when I have an error. Now if I hit return here to enter a new value the conditional highlighting will follow it since it's in all of the cells and it's immediately red because it's blank. Which could be a good indicator that I need to enter a value here. And as soon as I enter a value in and hit return since the value is a good one it's not red anymore. So already this is pretty useful. But let's say I want to modify it a bit. Let's say I don't want it to be red if it's a blank cell. So I want to select all of the cells again and I'm going to go to Conditional Highlighting, Show Highlighting Rules since there's already one there. That's what the button says now. And I'm going to add a rule. And in this rule I'm going to go and say I want blank and is blank. And then if it is blank instead of red fill I'm going to change it to be something else. I'm going to change it to bold. So I don't want it to be bold either. But by choosing bold I've turned off the red fill. Now I can go to Custom Style and I can turn off the bold as well. So basically it's going to be the default style. Now what I want to do is I want to put this rule first because the rules are going to execute in order and if a rule is matched it will stop executing the rules. So if the cell is blank Custom Style of really no style and then Rule 2 will never execute. So now if I go and enter in another row there you can see that one's blank until I enter something in. If it's too big of a value it's going to give me red. If it's in the range it will be blank. You can also see the one that was blank already shows no red there. So this is whether or not you want to allow blank values. Now you can also allow special values. Like say I want numbers between 1 and 9 but 55 is also OK. So I can allow that as well. I can select all of these and do the same thing again. So Show Highlighting Rules. I will add a rule and I'm going to say Numbers is equal to 55. And then I'm also going to make sure I switch to something that's not a fill there like Bold. And then I'm going to switch away to Custom Style, turn off Bolding, and then set that to be the first rule there. So now you can see the 55 is there. So now if I do another row, if I enter 55 in it accepts it. If I do another number that's outside the range it doesn't accept it. So this is all fine but it's also a little mysterious, right? If the user didn't read the instructions they might not understand why this is red and this is red and these others are not. So what you can do is you can use another cell to actually give them instructions. I'm going to click here in this cell and I'm going to start a formula by hitting the equals key and I'm going to do an if statement. An if statement will check for a condition and put one value in the cell if it's true, one if it's false. So then I'm going to do parentheses and there's actually two conditions I want to look for. So I'm going to do OR and parentheses and the first condition is if the cell to the left of it is less than 1 and comma because the second condition is next and that is the same cell is greater than 9. 
and end in parentheses for the or and then comma and now what text I want to have in the cell if it is true. So if it's less than 1 or greater than 9. Then I'm going to put instructions. And that's all in quotes and then a comma and then the instructions for if everything is correct is nothing. So just quotes with nothing inside. Then I'll close the parentheses. Now I'm going to take that formula there and I'm going to paste it in all the cells. I'm going to enlarge the column here and you can see that I get this everywhere the value is not between 1 and 9. Now of course I have that special rule for 55 so I'm not taking that into account there. I would need to add that as another or in there if I wanted that to be included. But the idea here is that if somebody enters in a wrong value like 0 or 44 they not only get red but they also get instructions. You could further go in and use special characters in here. Like I'm going to use Control Command Space at the beginning of this. I'm going to search for an arrow and I'm going to use this left arrow here. Enter that in plus a space. Now I copy and paste the formula throughout and you get a little arrow there so it's even a little clearer. So now as I go to the next line you can see it even appears when it's blank because I'm not testing for that which is nice because it gives me instructions. So if everything here was fine you would enter in a new value like this and it would give you a prompt. Go to do a new one. It gives you a prompt again. And if you get it wrong it's red and you still get the prompt there. So this really helps to guide the user of the spreadsheet so they enter in values that are within the proper range. Now a completely different technique is to set format cell and change the data format to either slider or stepper. Either one of these will allow you to set a minimum and a maximum. So I can do so I can set one for the minimum, nine for the maximum, an increment of one, and now what happens is these cells instead of you typing in them, you get this slider here. And you can do the same thing if you do stepper. But stepper has these little arrows. So now you can't go outside the range. And if you try to enter in a number, it will actually stick within that range. And if you want to do a collection of values, you actually do a pop up menu and then you could enter in different values. So you can click the plus button and enter in all the values. Even include odd values like 55 there. Get rid of this one here so I have a nice list in the order I want. And now you have this pop up menu where you get to choose from one of these. And in that case, you can't even type a value. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.